Hello and welcome to part 13 of our fundamental investing with the use of Python programming tutorial. Where we left off, uh, we were getting this data from Quandl, populating these arrays, and that's pretty much where we left off. We were also printing out the data just so we can see it with our eyeballs. So now the next thing we want to do is convert these arrays to NumPy arrays, and then with that conversion to a NumPy array, we can start to plot them within matplotlib. So to do all that, first we're going to have to get some more imports here. So we want uh, import matplotlib, and then we also want to do import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, just to keep it short for us. We're going to also import matplotlib.ticker as mticker, and well, we probably won't be using this, but we'll just throw it in there just in case. Um, mTicker will allow us to make an edit that you'd like to see probably in a little bit here, but we'll just leave it for now. And then the other thing we want to do is import matplot, matplotlib dot m or dot dates as m dates. And what that's going to allow us to do is is read dates. So, oh, and we also need a uh, numpy. So import numpy as np. Now, if you are just joining us in um, you haven't done any of these things if you don't have matplotlib or numpy I highly suggest you either watch my uh, there's a matplotlib tutorial series and then also if you watch the Python charting uh, tutorial series um, we go through the installation of matplotlib and numpy and then also if you have a 64-bit version of Python you can also get numpy um, from I forget what the name of the website is, but I even have a video on that as well for uh, getting 64-bit imports for things that don't have 64-bit install installers. So anyway, uh, that's that. Continuing right along. If you need links to any of those videos, uh, just comment below. If you can't find them, I'll link you to those videos uh, if anybody needs them. So the now that we have this stuff, uh, what we want to do is begin our conversion of these regular boring arrays into numpy arrays. So once we've populated those arrays, we'll come down here and my tab is not working apparently. This is weird. Oh yay. <laughs> anyway, um okay, so uh the first one we'll do is let's say we want to do the net income array. So we'll call this income date uh, comma income equals and then we're going to use numpy's load text functionality you can either load literally a text document here you can also load a arrays list and actually in python even though you know we put these little brackets around it it's really a list but so i call them arrays and luckily nobody's come in here with their nose up in the air and said hey there's no such thing as arrays but anyway uh <laughs> continuing on and so what we want to load is this list or array net income r so that's the thing that we're going to load in and then you have to tell it what the delimiter is and in our case it is um, just a comma and then unpack equals true oops just a straight up true you had to capitalize it though then what we want to do is is use m dates so it can read our date format and convert that into something that can be charted. So uh, to do that, you do converters, and in the uh, parameters of the converter, sorry, it's converters equal, and then do these little curly braces, right? And within there, the what you need to say is what element are we converting? It's going to be the zero with element, because it's the first part of the list. Then what do we want to do with that? We want to use m dates dot strip date to num. And no, I didn't typo. It's S T R P D A T E, the number two, and then N U M, and it's going to convert it to uh, a number. But it's not a Unix timestamp, so don't think you could just throw a Unix timestamp in there. Um, it's like a, I don't even know. I'm not positive how they're generating that number. But anyway, um, I forget. One time I found out how it goes, like what order it goes. I, I want to say like a day is a like a one. 
and so on. But anyway, I, I forget. Um, so in here, you specify the parameters of that date format. And so a percent uppercase Y means a full year. So like 2013, as opposed to a lowercase Y would mean like if the date just had like 13. Um, so anyway, 2013. And then our date format has a dash and then month and then uh, percent D for day. If you're curious, I do have, it's the same as if you were converting a Unix timestamp to a date stamp or, or a date stamp to a Unix timestamp. I do have tutorials on that if anyone's curious about um, all the variations of this. Like sometimes you might get a, a date stamp that literally writes out the, the month or you might get a date stamp that literally writes out maybe the day of the week or something like that, right? And so you want to know how to handle that stuff. Um, I do have a tutorial on all of that, but for now, this is what we'll need to read this uh, Quandl data. So that's the end of it, and uh, let's let me just confirm here that uh, that was closes that. Yes, okay. So that closes it off. So now we've created a NumPy array um, from this data. So now. Uh, now we can actually plot this data. Now, um, in the interest of, uh, in like one video, or I guess it'll probably be not the next video, but probably the video after that, we're going to incorporate this with our other charting application. So in the interest of that, uh, we're not going to, you'll see, but the X axes will be in this number format that, is like the numpy or matplotlib dates numbers um, and, and don't cry it's okay we'll, we'll fix that in like a whole nother video but just just know it's coming soon and, and we could fix it really quickly but I really just there's no point to do it because we're gonna push it into this other application that we've got going on too so anyway just heads up for that so for matplotlib we have to define the figure so figure equals plot figure Event and this this will change, but um, you could put some some parameters in here. But for now, we'll leave that blank. Now we're going to say ax1 because we only have one axis equals plot dot subplot to grid, and we're going to use this functionality uh, because that's what our application uses. And then in here, you can just put whatever you want. The other, the one that we're going to move to is currently six by four, uh, and the, so that's the size of the whole grid. And the next parameter is where we start in that grid, and it starts, you know, top left. Um, so we start at zero, zero. Then you specify row span. We're just going to take up the whole thing with this graph. So it's going to say row span six, and then column span, or call span, equals four. And so we'll take up the whole thing, but eventually we'll be able to, like, mold and put some other charts on here. So, um, so that's that. Now ax1.plot. What do we want to plot? Let's easy part, income, date, and then income. And again, it's not going to be in pretty date format yet, but we will get there. But I just want to graph this and show it to you guys. So we should be good to go. So we'll run it. And hopefully, so it printed out all of our stuff. So the, the, that's the date format for anybody that was couldn't remember, I guess. And you should have got a graph here that popped up for you as long as you had NumPy and matplotlib installed. And so here's what I was talking about, the date format. It's very ugly, but uh, well, like I said, we'll, we'll, we will eventually fix that. Have no fear. But anyway, so this is the net income for what are we doing even? I think Yahoo is what we've been running. Yeah. So anyway, Yahoo on you know long scale looks like their income has been doing pretty good. So that's the basics of throwing up a, um, a graph into matplotlib based on the data that we're reading from Quandle. Now in the next video, what we're going to do is do the other, the other arrays, add them up uh, here. So just in case all you cared about was, was this stuff, uh, we can do that. Um, and I'll show you guys how. And then probably in the subsequent video after that, we're going to plug this into our, our other charting uh, application for some pretty supreme epicness and then after that then we'll connect it with the head of the program being our uh, screener and then when it finds a stock it'll spit out all this data it'll spit out the chart the price the RSI the MACD and then 
also the net income revenue and return on capital historically so pretty cool stuff coming up pretty fast um hopefully you guys are enjoying as always thanks for watching